So in this video, I'm just going to go through a firmware upgrade on the MTR105. If I switch the instrument on and go around to the settings, it takes a few seconds to start up. And we need to go to uh, instrument information and take a look. You can see uh, what's going to get upgraded is the GUI and the measurement version. They are on 010103 and 103. Uh, this upgrade will take these versions to 010104 and 104 for the measurement version. And the only thing I have done before doing this is had the unit on charge just to make sure that it's up to full charge. Uh, I don't think it's an overly big file, but I don't want to risk the instrument going out of battery power whilst it's doing the upgrade process. The upgrade is downloaded from the Mega website. You unzip it, it comes out as a bin file and they tell you to put this into the root directory of a USB stick and then I'll plug the USB stick into here, if we can get him open. And then we'll zoom in, if we can, a bit closer to the screen. Okay, and we'll switch him on and see what happens. Okay, so it finds the update. Okay, so the lock button is the yellow button down here. Let's zoom out, so there'll be this button here. We'll just hit that and we'll see how fast it goes. Yeah, pretty quick, 20% already. Now the thing I couldn't find whilst I was downloading this is a notes file to say what's actually been upgraded, what the firmware is doing. So I'm not 100% sure. I'll have a peek through the instrument at the end and just see if anything has been updated. Okay, so I'll push the actual upgrade up to one side of the screen, so that'll keep going while we're going through the rest of this. The instrument now has actually been upgraded. One of the main items that I asked to be addressed was the use of the MTR105 for reading the voltage out of a frequency inverter. So the instrument's set up to voltage there, which I hope you can see. And we'll set him to three-phase voltage and direction of rotation there. And we will flip him on and we'll see what happens. Uh, and this was very erratic last time and by the looks of that it's not very good is it? Let's take him up to, uh, to 10 hertz, see where we can get him. That's 10. And we can see frequency is above 400 hertz. You can see the voltages are just bouncing around. Up to 25. Oh, 25. 93. Yeah, there's still no stability there, is there? So it doesn't look like that's been addressed up to maximum now. All bouncing around, Oop. bouncing around over a thousand volts. There, you can see the phase rotation isn't being displayed at all, so it doesn't look like the upgrade addresses that issue. Okay, we'll switch him off, wind him down, unplug him. Uh, let's go to motor rotation. There wasn't much of an issue with uh, the actual rotation detection. It uh, it worked quite easy for that. It wasn't perhaps as sensitive as some of the actual rotation checkers that I have. Um, so we'll fling him around to motor direction of rotation and give the motor a spin. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh... Yeah, seems about the same. It's a bit difficult to tell without comparing it to the other one, but by the looks of things. 
Yeah, it's about a full turn again, really. So one of the other ones was actual insulation resistance testing. Uh, so we have temperature compensation here, which we can turn on. Uh, that's not available. It's only available on, on this spot test. Yeah, it's the same again. So requested it available for DAR and for time testing, but it's just not there, is it? Uh, yeah, doesn't look to be uh, include that as well. Here we go. So we'll switch him round, so we should hopefully see him. Uh, I don't always do that. Instrument information, and there we are. The one hundred and four. So one of the other issues was the behaviour of the insulation tester during polarisation index testing. Um, I doubt they've got it to record all of the resistance curve data, but I wonder if they've modified it so that it records both DAR and PI whilst it's carrying out the PI tests. So I've hooked it up to my simulator here and we'll give it a test and see what happens. Okay, so it's finished the test. Uh, it looks like it's still detecting the charge, so I'll take him off. And there we see our polarization index number. Just the one minute and the 10 minute. No dial recorded on the Pi. We'll download it to the software and just see if the data is on that. Uh, but it doesn't look like that's been resolved either. Okay, so that's the update process done. New firmware took just over four minutes to install on the instrument. Uh, I've had a play around with it. I can't really determine if it's done anything significant to the way the instrument operates. I presume it's under the bonnet ones that have been uh, amended. Relatively painless experience really to update it. It's gone through okay. And we'll just see how the instrument performs uh, until another firmware upgrade comes out. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in another video.